neighbors. It's good to be home. So, can we all agree the small town song fits most of us here? Uh, well, first of all, uh, thank you to Blaine. This is a state and a country that is willing to put their country above their politics. That's exactly what Blaine did. Not from Nebraska. So, <laughs> folks, first of all, I got to give a huge thank you. This state has produced some of the best and the most effective politicians like our former Senator Ben Nelson. Look, we got some elections coming up, as you know. I want to give some thank you to all those folks who run for office, put themselves out there and their families out there. Give a big thank you to Preston Love Jr. for putting himself out there to run. And I'm guessing we got a few folks here from Lincoln, right? enough votes in Lincoln, let's make sure we elect Carol Blood in that and win these seats that go. Do that. And when Kamala Harris is president, which is happening here in 17 days, people, we're, we're going to need a Congress that actually knows what work looks like for the American people. Send Tony Vargas there and put Democrats in charge. And I, Tony, 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 and for all of you, I'm, I'm gonna. If you give me a point of personal privilege, I'm. Uh, today's pretty special to me. Uh, my big sister's here today in support, and I'm just glad to say thank you to saying. Like all of us, most of our family's with us, so thank you for that. So grateful. Also, a thank you. Uh, I got the, the Butte crowd here and the Valentine crowd and the Alliance crowd, so thank you for that. And to every single one of you here, look. It's a beautiful day in October. It's 75 degrees. You could have been anywhere. You chose to come here because you believe in the promise of America and you love this country. So thank you. And, and if I could, if I could, the blue dot that has taken over the country as they know what you're doing here, let me be very clear what this blue dot symbolizes. This blue dot symbolizes democracy. It symbolizes decency. It symbolizes a woman's right to make her own choices. It's a lot more than a pin, and it's a lot more than just politics. It's about who we are as people. This state and this district are showing the rest of the democracy will run right through here. <laughs> I, did we have this? I, I thought, I saw Donald Trump's mic went bad in Detroit. You do not want me dancing for 20 minutes like this dude. I, somebody on his staff should explain the YMCA song to him too, just so they know. So, let's see. We love it. Look. 17 days till this election happens, folks. Here we go. We're running because all of you are. We're leaving it all on the field, folks, because there's too much at risk. There's too much at risk. Kamala and I, we are barnstorming the country. I just saw, as I walked in here, Kamala Harris's rally down in Georgia had over 20,000 people showing up. Now, 
Now, we're going to win Georgia. Last time we won it, we, we should call Donald Trump and ask him what we won it by, 11,470 votes. We're going to win it by more, but I said, how great would it be if we won Georgia by one vote and it was Jimmy Carter's vote he cast this week? But look, we're going everywhere. We're on podcasts, we're on TV, we're doing rallies. The, the two of us are about one hit away from being regulars on Fox News, and that's hell. So, you know what? It takes a little stamina to run for president. It takes a lot of stamina to be president. So, uh, you might be asking yourself, how in the hell does Donald Trump think he's going to do this? Well, I'm sure his, his, his handlers are being pretty clear. They've got him under wraps, if you haven't seen this. Look, Donald Stick is old, tired, and divisive, just like him. There, he's, he's refusing to face Kamala in a debate again. Can you blame him after the butt whipping he took at that? That might, that, that decision not to debate again might be the smartest thing he's done in the last four years. So. Uh, Look, they pulled him out of interviews, and his team admitted he's exhausted. Canceled another talk show this week. Look, give him a break. He's nearly 80 years old. He's out there rambling, moving around. We'll give him a break. But look, he's not up to this anymore, folks. He's not up to it, and we need to make that clear. But you know what? You need to be clear about this. They know this, but you know who's sitting waiting in the wings? If... If you don't know, and most of you here know, there's something called the 25th Amendment, and you can be damn sure J.D. Vance has read the 25th Amendment. Look, I don't care how tired this guy is. I can promise you, he's not nearly as exhausted as we are with his crap in the last four years of him. But don't despair, Omaha. We're tough damn people out here. Don't despair because he is never going to be President of the United States, Kamala Harris is. And you feel it, you feel it. She's offering a new way forward, not the same old, tired, divisive, hateful stuff. Kamala and I both grew up in middle-class families. We know that our economy works best when it's fair for everybody. It's that simple. And she's not just talking about it, she's laid out a concrete plan to make sure every single person in this country benefits from this economy. One, 100 million Americans will see a tax cut under Kamala Harris. Taking on the price gougers in Big Pharma. Those guys say, oh, you know, there's no such thing as price gouging. Anybody see what happened to hurricanes coming to Florida and airline tickets went through the roof? That's not capitalism. That's graft. That's grifting. They're grifting off people. They're making money off people's back. And when it comes to things like insulin, for God's sakes, we had to pass a law in Minnesota because we had a young man named Alex Smith. He turned 26 and went off his parents' insurance. To get his insulin, he was rationing it. Alex Smith died because of that. His mom, Nicole Smith, came to the, the Capitol in St. Paul and said, I'll be damned if another parent loses a child over insulin, for God's sakes. And we passed a law capping insulin at $35. And you know why that's important and obscene? Because that little vial of insulin that now costs $35, they were charging $800 for it. You know how much it costs to make it? $5. $5. So our economy works best when it works for everyone. But some of you in here, and I can tell you, many of you may not be there yet, but you start getting near to 60, you start paying attention to some really smart things like Medicare and Social Security. Really smart things. This week, Kamala Harris proposed, and it's a plan we'll put in place to send Tony Vargas there. We get a majority. We pass this and sign it into law. Home care through Medicare for our seniors. Two. I'm glad to see young people here. They don't care about this, but some of us with less hair do care. I'll tell you what, also adding to Medicare, I think most people didn't know this, adding vision and hearing to it. Look, for those of you that want to start a small business, 
a $50,000 tax credit to get your foot in the door and start your American dream. Look, big companies figure out a way. Some of our largest corporations pay zero in federal tax. Why isn't that going to the middle class to start our small businesses? That's what we're proposing. And look, that owning a home is just critical to you. We, we talk about this in Minnesota, and I know, that, I know this being a Nebraskan that you have it too. The saying is, the economy works and we all do better when we all do better. Paul Wellstone said that in Minnesota a long time ago. And it's, it's about an economy and it's about fairness. It's about understanding that the workers that built this country should receive a fair wage. It's about understanding that health care should be a human right and that you should go home safe after work. Those are the things we care about. Now, look, Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, they got a little different vision of how things go. We, we know what they'll do. Now, be very clear, I, 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 I want to give them credit because he has kept his word on a few things. When he first got to office, he made it his goal, and if it weren't for John McCain, he'd have got it done. He'll do it this time. They'll gut and take away the Affordable Care Act that will kick you off if you have a pre-existing condition, stop your children from staying on your health insurance, drive up premiums, and make this country less healthy, sicker, and poorer. That's what they'll do. Look, they'll go after Medicare and Social Security, and I've said this, it doesn't matter to him if he gets his Social Security check. He's sitting down at Mar-a-Lago not paying taxes with a billion dollars. It matters to my sister and my mom when she gets her Social Security check so she can buy food and eat for the house. That's how this works. And just to be clear, this is where you need to talk to your relatives, your family members, like, oh, I don't like Donald Trump's personality, but his policies are fine. Which ones are those? He's proposing, he's proposing putting a national sales tax on nearly everything we buy, adding about $4,000 to the average family's uh, costs each year. That's economists saying that. Ch China doesn't pay the tariffs, you pay the tariffs. No more than Mexico didn't pay for a damn wall that he didn't build anyway. Look. We know, he kept his word on this. He took his wealthy donors down to Mar-a-Lago and he promised them, because I've said this, Donald Trump never keeps his word. That's not true, he does sometimes. He took those wealthy donors down to Mar-a-Lago and he said, you're rich as hell and I'm gonna give you a tax cut. He did it, he did it, he followed through. He also became, as he himself said, the king of debt and drove up the national debt, $8 trillion, more than any president in US history. So be very clear. This guy knows nothing about business except how to go bankrupt. He knows nothing about paying his bills, and he knows nothing about the middle class. Now, guys like Blaine, us, and I think there's probably, I think there's probably some of you here that are the same place of this. The Republican Party of old contributed much to this country. When the Republican Party of old talked about freedom, they meant it. That's not these guys. That's not these guys. These guys mean that government should be free to be in your exam room with your doctor. They talk about small government, apparently small enough to fit in your bedroom with the people you're there with. Or in your library to tell you what to read. Look. I use this, and you've heard me say this, I got this from my friends in Valentine and Butte and Alliance places where I live. We respect our neighbors' choices. We don't have to agree with them. You do you, do you I'll do me. That's the thing we do. And look, that, there's that golden rule, do unto others. That's a good golden rule. I have an addendum to that too, that there's a second golden rule, mind your own damn business with it. it goes with it. Somebody said, you think Donald Trump knows the golden rule? And I said, yes, yes. Those are the instructions he gave to his interior designer for his gold toilet or whatever the hell he put in. So yes, he knows the golden rule. Look. When Kamala Harris and I and the folks here talk about freedom, we mean you should be free to live your life the way you choose. The fam your choice about your own health care decisions, about your own families.
the freedom for seniors to retire with dignity by strengthening Social Security and Medicare. And for all of us here, and those who have little ones, and those who have grandkids, and just those that are just basic, decent human beings, the freedom to send our little ones dressed in their finest clothes off to a school to meet with a teacher and to be there and learn, the freedom to do that without being shot dead in their classroom. That's what freedom is. And this is Nebraska and the folks who are here. And I know, look, I know and you know, we know guns. I'm a veteran. I'm a hunter. Kamala's a gun owner, too, at the same time. Owning guns doesn't mean we can't be for common sense solutions to protect our children. It doesn't mean that. You can uphold the Second Amendment while upholding our primary responsibility, the safety of our children and our neighbors. And this is where you take the notes for that, uh, that family member that's not sure where they're voting. Isn't it interesting how both members of the Democratic ticket are gun owners this year? But, but the guy on the Republican ticket can't pass a background check to get one. You, you know, the, the 34 felonies that come up on the background check, they, 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 they send you right out of Cabela's when that comes up, to be sure about that. So, all right. Well, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak to part of the audience here. I'm going to speak to the men on this one um, because we're going. And there's a lot of you here. Look, all of you, for the women in your life that you love, your wives, your daughters, your mothers, your friends, all of them. Literally, their lives are on the line in this election, guys. That's what's on the line. Donald Trump appointed his Supreme Court justices who did exactly what he told them to do. They repealed the protections of Roe versus Wade, and he brags about it. He is glad that my daughter, your daughters, our wives, have fewer rights than their mothers and grandmothers had. He brags about it. 20 states, including right here, now have the Trump abortion bans. He calls that a beautiful thing. A beautiful thing. You're seeing it. You're seeing it all over. Women being denied care at the ER, having miscarriages in parking lots. Survivors of rape, Hadley Duvall. These are women's names that should have never been known by Americans because it's nobody's damn business about what they're doing with their health care. But... But... We now know them. The bravery of Hadley Duvall to stand up and say when she was 12 years old, a child, raped and impregnated by her stepfather. And they told her, and J.D. Vance said, that there should be no exceptions for rape or incest. Because he said, two wrongs don't make a right. There is not one damn thing right of what happened to Hadley Duvall. And what they're doing makes it so much worse. So look, to the men here, it's bigger than that. These are the guys in Project 2025. They want to control from contraception to fertility clinics. Fertility clinics that in states are now trying to close and turn couples away. Couples that simply want to have a family and use those services. And I said, this is personal for me. Again, you don't need to hear about my personal stuff, but my wife and I have talked about it. For years, we tried to have children, and it was because we could use fertility treatments that we have our beautiful family. And I'll be... Da I'll be damned if any politician, especially Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, should have any damn say about your family and your access to fertility treatments. So look, when we... When we take this Congress, when Kamala Harris is president and they send over a bill recodifying Roe versus Wade, the protection of women to make their own decisions over their own bodies, Kamala Harris will sign it into law. Look, I don't, 
I think we got to know, and I, I get this, we have 17 days, and I know in this amphitheater, I'm preaching to the choir, but, but folks, our recital is 17 days away. And we need to sing loudly. So it's important to know what's on the other side. If Donald Trump would be elected again, he would have the opportunity to appoint either two or three more Supreme Court justices during the next four years. This is a group of folks who already told Donald Trump, you have immunity to do whatever the hell you want to do. These are the folks that will be making decisions about the laws and this country for our children's and grandchildren's lifetime. They would have six of the nine Supreme Court justices, and they would have no accountability over Donald Trump. And look, I know that's not the future you want for your family. It's not the one. So look, there's a solution. You and everyone you know vote for Kamala Harris, and none of that will happen. None of it. There's, we're not going back. Look, there's, there's plenty of reasons that the stakes in this election are really high, but let me give you one more. Um, some of you might have heard, and look, people, People are overwhelmed by this. And, and I run into people who say, look, I'm, I'm just not that into politics. I'm tired of it. Well, too damn bad. Politics is into you. So, and, and some of these folks say, ah, we got through one Trump term. And, you know, they, they rewrite the history of it. They don't recall that all of our neighbors were dying of COVID because his idiocy of neglecting science and telling us to inject bleach didn't do us much good. But I got to tell you this. They tell us we could survive another four years. I, I'm an optimist, and some of you have heard me say this. You don't survive the lunchroom for all those years without being an optimist. Um, I am an optimist, but I truly don't know if the institutions will hold if we get another four years of Donald Trump. I genuinely don't believe it. And I say this because something has happened over the last few weeks that is unprecedented in our history. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the top military officer in this country, a decorated veteran, General Mark Milley, top military, he didn't, he didn't mince words. He told us on the record that Donald Trump, and this is a direct code, is fascist to the core and the most dangerous person that America has ever faced. This guy's not a Democrat, people. He's a lifelong military officer who served this country. And this week, uh, James Mattis, Trump's own uh, Secretary of Defense, endorsed that very view. He, he said Donald Trump, these folks, his, his chief of staff, John Kelly, another four-star general, said Donald Trump was the most damaged person he'd ever met in his life. So Trump's plan is to seize unprecedented power for himself with a Supreme Court that give him the right to do that. It's not hypothetical. Once again, I got to give credit to this. I said Donald Trump has no plan, not just a concept of a plan. Uh, he has an actual plan. It's Project 2025. And it's coming right from their mouths. They're talking about this. This one I have to tell you. Some of you might know who this guy is. Um, he was Trump's national security advisor for a short, short time. His name was Mike Flynn. Trump has said, Trump, some of you don't know. I, I, I hate to encourage you to go look this guy up, but it's important to know. Trump said he would have a top role in the next White House. This last week, Mike Flynn was asked, think about this, this is America, this is not some fictional place. He was asked if he would lead military tribunals to carry out executions against those who are against Donald Trump if Trump were to win. That's what he was asked. So, America, the answer to that is, are you out of your goddamn mind? But, no, no, no. Mike Flynn's answer was, we have to win first. That's the, that's the guy he wants to give the key. Because look in mind, you know who he's talking about? He's talking about me. But, but don't kid yourself about this. When they're done with me, he's talking about you. That's what they're talking about. Because you had the audacity as an American to come and express your political views in a safe and nonviolent manner that is in the best tradition of who we are and countless people fought and gave their lives for us to be able to do this. A 
That's exactly right. That's exactly right. I'll be damned if I'll give the flags to a fascist like these guys. And I'll be damned if I'll give them family issues because we know where the family values set. We're not going to give them freedom, that's for damn sure, because we know what freedom looks like. And just for good measures, I'm not giving them football, the posers, because they don't know crap. Look, the, the Donald... The Donald Trump of 2016 is not the Donald Trump that's running now. He is far more unfit than he was in 2016. He's more deranged. He's more desperate to keep his butt out of prison than he was in 2016. And he has made sure there's no guardrails. When I asked J.D. Vance a simple question in debate, did Donald Trump lose the election? He wouldn't answer it. He answered it this week. He said, no, he didn't lose the election. So just to be very clear, if J.D. Vance had been setting where Mike Pence was setting, they would have overthrown the elected government of the United States. There's a word for that. It's called traitor, just so we know. There's a word for that. And you know it here, and Tony Vargas knows it, God knows the spineless Republicans in Congress won't do a damn thing to stop him from doing whatever he wants. So look, you know it. There's one way we stop this from happening. You came here. We came here with the courage. Democrats, independents, Republicans across this state. Think about it. Think about it. You tell me. You tell me how bad Donald Trump is that he brought Bernie Sanders, Dick Cheney, and the for Christ's sakes, Taylor Swift, onto the same ticket, on the same ticket. So look, folks, we do this the right way. We do it the American way. We get organized, we make the phone calls, we do the door knocks, we knock, and we clean his clock on election day and win this thing. That's how you do it. So, so 17 days, folks, and this thing's close. We're still the underdogs, it's still a race, but we're leaving it all on the field. Return your mail ballot today if you have one. Don't wait. You can vote early at your county election office Monday through Friday. Be sure to bring a photo ID, Nebraskans. If you're not registered, you have until October 25th. You can register in person. You can vote at the same time. If you want more, IWillVote.com slash NE. So tell your neighbors, get them out there. Look, we need to door knock. We need to phone call. One or two extra votes per precinct could make a difference, and you know that. I know we ask much. I know we ask much. If you got a little, you can go to KamalaHarris.com, pitch in a buck or two, and to know what that does, that puts buses at polling stations to take people to vote. It puts another door knocker out on the door. It runs one more ad on Facebook, wherever it might be, to get out this positive message about a new way forward. We can do that. And I have to tell you, I think all of you know this. This thing is going to be close. The blue, the blue wall is going to hold across the north of America, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Minnesota. But you do the math, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, the rest of the states, 269. One dot makes the difference. Look. <laughs> Blue dot. Look, you're inspiring the rest of the country. It's because you believe in democracy. You believe in freedom. You believe it's done. We're going to end this thing on the right thing. The vice she talks about when we fight, we win. when we vote, we win. Omaha, put us over the top. Let's go.